for a pledge to the Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, the board has reserved this time to hear comments from the audience. Those wishing to address the board are asked to stand, give their name and address, and limit their comments to five minutes or less per individual or group. Concerns and comments during this session should be directly related to items listed on the proposed agenda for this meeting. Audience members seeking a response should complete a board correspondence sheet and return it to our district clerk, Christine Slagle, up front here. Um, audience members are asked to adhere to social distancing regulations when addressing the Board of Education. We do have a microphone set up if anyone would like to address the board at this time. No one? Okay. All right, well, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> we have a proposed consent agenda. Uh, for tonight's meeting, and I believe that we've got copies on the back table there if anybody needs any. Uh, adoption of the consent agenda upon motion and a second, an affirmative vote by members present approves each and every item so designated. However, prior to the adoption of the consent agenda, any board member may remove any item from the consent agenda. This item will then come up for discussion as part of the regular agenda. The purpose of the consent agenda is to expedite routine matters so that the board has more time to deal with more substance matters. Um, we have the, the consent agenda that, uh, and with consent for line items, uh, um, personnel items, numbers, uh, item seven, and new business item eight. Uh, we had talked about uh, pulling item 7A1 uh, just for this evening. And if any board member would like to, um, I guess we, we need a motion um, to bring that to the floor, please. So, Mr. Hoff, and a second, Ms. Bill. Um, so, if, if anyone would like to pull any other item out, of the consent agenda? Mr. Aldrich, I don't need to pull anything out, but I wanted <coughs> to just note uh, one thing. So, um, item in new business, we have item uh, uh, F, which is approved minutes for CSE and CPSE uh, meetings. There's just one added date to that. We did receive the backup for <coughs> September 17th, but it was not listed on the agenda. So, I would just ask to reflect that in a minute. Okay, so that's page five, item number eight F, Correct. and and that is uh, approved minutes from the CSE and CPSE meetings held September second and September seventeenth as submitted. Okay. Anything else that uh, board members would like to pull out? If not, uh, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda signified by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you very much. We have administrator's report and the school safety, um, safety plan. Um, Ms. Piper and Mr. Ted. All right. Back over here. We have the Fredonia School District district-wide school safety plan. This needs to be done at a board meeting for public hearing once a year. Officer Kaplmeier and I worked on this plan together. Um, yeah, last year we revamped the plan in full force. We looked through it with Cap Meyer, revamped it all with all of the local law enforcement agencies, looked at all the pages, looked at make sure that we are accurate as far as their procedures and their policies, and we feel that the plan reflects a safety plan that is in conjunction with the needs of Fredonia Central School District. The plan has been shared with all of the board members. It's also on the website for all of the public to be able to review. 
don't know if anybody has any questions specifically for Mr. Fackelmeyer or myself about the district safety plan. Any questions? This does need to be done once a year. We have to review it. The biggest thing I think Tim and I saw this year was really just updating who's on the law enforcement phone numbers, who's changed as far as who needs to be part of the safety plan. We looked it over, it looked to be yeah, yeah. And they are also mailed a copy of this as well, so they have a copy of the plan. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, that... They are also mailed a copy of the plan as well. You said law The law enforcement. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. It's very difficult to uh, hear people. Sorry. I think I'm six feet from Ms. Troutman, so I might be all right as long as you stay that way. We're working on our two barriers, so yeah. it's a little better. Thank you. I just want to put a thank you out to Officer Kalkemeyer because he really did a lot of the legwork reaching out to the law enforcement agencies, making those connections. He's just established some great relationships with all of those agencies. We feel like we have great connections with them, and I really, truly appreciate Mr. Kalkemeyer's work. Yeah. I was just wondering, um, is, how does COVID affect Great question. So we did attach our return to school district plan to this. However, regulations were just sent down by New York State that by April, every school has to include a COVID or a, a disease control policy as part of their safety plan. So Tim and I have been talking about that being the next step. So you will see us again as we bring forward that portion of the safety plan. So great question. Lisa. From a safety perspective, um, with COVID, so we have face coverings. We likely will have kids with backpacks where we haven't allowed that before. If lockers are still, you know, mm -hmm. off limits, mm -hmm. what you know, what's being discussed, or you know, if maybe that hasn't made it into the plan yet, but where is it? That? It really hasn't. But we've been working hard as an administrative team and the district nurses with the Department of Health, and we've been following their guidelines and and going by their recommendations because they are the experts as far as it when it comes to medical and keeping kids safe for infectious control. I'm not talking about the infection. I'm oh. talking about not being able to recognize people with masks on uh, or having the backpacks mm -hmm. where now, you know, students could have things mm -hmm. in their backpacks, so the, the actual physical safety component. Yeah, of that. I'm sure that all has to be addressed as part of the COVID portion of the plan because that's real. No. So we haven't, we we haven't, haven't talked about yet. that in terms of the return yet. What? We, 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 we've been having conversations with uh, Lisa Barone from Brooks Hospital. She's been with us via Zoom many, many times. And she is actually going to, in the next week or two, come here physically and do a walkthrough of our building. Again, looking at our protocols, where are we at, how are things going, address any issues or concerns that staff may have. One of the things that she is recommending is that we do these lockers. Because she said there will be less touch points if we use the lockers and then we, we figure out the dismissal of how to get them so they're not all going at once, obviously, but keeping the, their things in their locker would actually be less invasive, if you will, so therefore the backpacks may not be necessary. Okay, great. I can speak to the face masks as far as identifying parents for pickups or guardians for pickups. We are asking them to remove those so we can see identification if we aren't familiar with the, the person. So that is still happening. Just because that's important, we need to ensure that students are being picked up by who they're permitted to be picked up by. Great. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. We have uh, next. We have the approval of minutes from the last meeting. <coughs> Any corrections, additions, amplifications? If not, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed? Thank you. Uh, next, we have the financial treasurer's report. Uh, we have two items here, uh, the approval of contracts for transportation services. Can I have a motion to bring that to the floor, please? So moved. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. And a second? Second. Ms. Powell Ford. Uh, any questions on that? 
Mr. Mr. Forbes, just uh, any comments on that at all? Just pointing out that this is the run that we had to implement due to the change in the UK program going to morning and afternoon sessions. Mm -hmm. and, and this is the, the noon run because it's a half a day for them. That's great. Okay. Any questions on that? Not all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. Next, we have uh, an approval of uh, a contract with uh, Children's Education Services. Can I have a motion to bring that to the floor, please? Ms. Gulley? Yes. Ms. Second? Second. Second. Ms. Paul Foreman. Any questions on that? If not, all those. Well, uh, just, well, could, could there be a little explanation as to the short period of time and what's achieved? Can you clarify that question? It's, a, it's, it's from September uh, 21st to October 16th, so it's only right. one we, we have a teacher out on leave, and so it's a replacement for the therapy that does each teacher delivers to our IEP students. <coughs> Thank you for clarifying that. <coughs> with that, that question. Um, any other questions? All those in favor signify by saying <coughs> aye. Aye. All opposed? Uh, next, uh, we have um, the approval of an appointment of Tim Kackelmeyer. Um, we have uh, a little different language on this um, than, than what we have in the backup, but uh, what we need to do before I bring a motion to the floor um, is we just need to change the motion slightly, and it is um, approving the, the permanent employment of Tim Kackelmeyer, school safety advisor, upon the successful completion of his one year probationary appointment, effective August 19, 2020. Uh, and this is for the purpose of obtaining the New York State Education 211 waiver. Mr. Kackelmeyer's appointment is hereby effective for the 2021 school year. Um, can I get a motion to bring that to the floor, please? Mr. Chambrone, thank you. And a second? Second. Let's go. Any questions on this? If not, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Right. All opposed? Thank you. Congratulations, Mr. Kessler. Uh, we're very pleased to have continued this. <laughs> it's, it's been a great, uh, great position. Thank you. I, I think we got to take our time here because this is only uh, 15 minutes. Uh, nearing the end. Um, so, uh, the board has reserved this time to hear comments from the audience. Those wishing to address the board are asked to stand, give their name and address, and limit their comments to five minutes or less per individual or group. Audience members seeking a response should complete a board correspondence sheet and then turn it to the district group clerk, Christine Slagle. Audience members are asked to adhere to social distancing regulations when addressing the Board of Education. Is there anyone who would like to address the board tonight? Yes. Hello. We have a microphone. Michelle. Good evening. Michelle Greeno, 7849 Plank Road, Cherry Creek, New York. On behalf of the Fredonia Teachers Association, I'm speaking to you tonight to draw some attention to the reopening plans that are presented as a part of the school safety plan. Let me begin by making it very clear that teachers here want to return all students to in-person learning as soon as possible. It's been absolutely delightful getting to know our students through whatever means we have available. It's due to a staggeringly incredible view excuse me, group of educators and support staff going above and beyond each day that we're able to have any sort of success right now. 
The FTA acknowledges and lives the difficulties of remote and hybrid plans with our own children. We know that the best educational plan is in person. However, we also must acknowledge that we're living in a pandemic, and it is our duty to ensure that any plan we stand behind will be, first and foremost, safe. I also want to say that the, the teachers support our cleaning staff and all of the workers involved in maintaining the building and grounds. They're working so very hard, but they are very understaffed. Additionally, the support staff, teacher assistants, and teacher aides have been doing remarkable work as we've begun the year. I ask that the board carefully scrutinize the reopening plan and ask where the procedures are written, how they are being communicated with all stakeholders, how successfully they are being implemented, and what plans are changing without full transparency. Are the plans for hybrid and in-person 3 through 12 actually feasible as written? Is it a better plan for grades three through six to work directly with their teachers two days a week hybrid or five days a week remote? What issues are currently unresolved in cleaning and disinfection of shared spaces? Please reassure teachers who are just getting a handle on the current teaching models that no plan change will occur without significant lead time to prepare. Switching from remote to hybrid or in-person teaching is not something that can be done well without appropriate time to plan. Please talk to teachers and parents in districts who are using the hybrid model. How is it going? What issues have they been able to solve? What remains a problem? We've been made aware that the District Reopening Committee will reconvene this week. It's our distinct hope that the concerns that have been highlighted to date and which are brought forth in that forum will be addressed and resolved and communicated clearly before additional students are brought into the district. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the board? Hi there, Julie McCullough, 131 Pulaski Street. Ms. Greeno, I echo what you say about um, planning and advance notice. I too, as a parent of a district, of a child in this district would also appreciate that uh, respect and courtesy, so thank you for that. I've spoken to everybody here multiple times about wanting my child to be back in person five days a week. We're not there yet. She's still fifth grader, 10 year old. But I am here to reinforce what I said at the last meeting about the lack of instruction on the remote plan and how I do not support this and how I do not think we are anywhere near where we should be. I've sat back for a few weeks now as we are in week three of school and I have taken careful notes on my 10 year old daughter's schedule who is in fifth grade. I have it here, and I would be more than willing to pass this along to anybody who would like to see it. From 7.40 until 9.10 every day, my fifth grader has attendance and a combined ELA and social studies. For those of you who can't see this up close, that is one hour and 10 minutes combined of ELA and social studies five days a week. She then has a study hall five days a week from 8.40, I'm sorry. She then has a study hall five days a week from 9.20 until 9.50. On Mondays only, she has Zoom via gym from 10 to 10.30. That is Mondays only. She then has a Zoom from 1040 until 1150 combined math and science five days a week. From 1150 on, she is free. Mondays, she has chorus from 2 to 230 and orchestra on Tuesdays from 2 to 230. So Wednesday through Friday, she is done at 11.50. Keep in mind, 
that is a morning study hall five days a week. Also keep in mind that I did say gym was every Monday only. She has a special two days a week during the other time. So on Wednesdays and Fridays, she has two study halls in the morning, as well as endless time in the afternoon. This is concerning, especially after your presentation, Ms. Piper, two weeks ago. Again, I reiterate that I am a huge advocate of education. I'm more than concerned that my 10-year-old daughter missed school three months last year and is not receiving what I believe to be standard public school education. If we are going on to a remote plan, I do not think that the fifth grade middle school plan is where it should be. Ms. Troutman had said last board meeting that seventh grade was receiving instruction daily and she had mentioned about sixth grade and there was some talk about synchronous and asynchronous learning. However, my daughter's in fifth grade and from everything that I have been told or understand, fifth through eighth grade is not receiving the same education. I can't comprehend that, especially after hearing Mr. Drollinger say that all of his students are receiving at least two and a half hours of education a day. And after hearing Mr. Paschke say that all of his students are receiving at least two and a half hours of instruction a day. I spoke to a music teacher this week. Again, my daughter receives 30 minutes of music a week. And I said how much I have always supported the music program at Fredonia. Music is a very big part of the Fredonia Central School District, and I fully support that. I find it hard to support 30 minutes a week, especially since we pride ourselves on that. So again, I'm here to urge everybody that is listening to give my child a fair chance and to give them, and to give her <laughs> um, a public education that she deserves. So to the fellow parents and teachers and administrators that I've spoken with and board members over the past few weeks who share my concern and sometimes frustration, I thank you um, for your encouragement and I thank you for listening and I thank you in your efforts to our combined efforts to get our children back in school and to receive the best education that they can. To the administrators and teachers and board members who do not feel this way, I see you and I hear you also. And I'm taking notes. Are you gonna have the same mentality come May when it's budget time? Are you going to then think how great it is that my 10 year old should be an independent learner and doesn't need the instruction that is provided to them daily, five days a week? I'm interested to see that as well. So again, I encourage everybody here to please look at that schedule and to please keep in mind at the forefront that our goal here all together should be what's best for kids and what's best for their education. And given what my child is currently receiving, I do not think that we are anywhere near that. Thank you.
Hi, uh, Jeff Truinski, Bredigan Road, Forestville, New York, science teacher here at Fredonia High School. Hi, uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity for working with your amazing sons and daughters here at Fredonia. It's, it's really an honor to be working with such amazing young adults. But I came here tonight to advocate for the high school science program. Since 2018, numerous major changes have occurred to the high school science program and the science department doesn't feel that these changes uh, benefit our students. First, in 2018, the district cut our AIS geoscience class in order to cover a section of middle school science. At that time, we suggested hiring a part-time person in the middle school or to allow us in the high school to offer an advanced section of Regents Earth Science at the high school to cover this overage. Um, neither of these options were really considered. In 2018, administration cut our AIS bioscience class. So we are, we are currently not running an AIS section in science in the high school. And in, 2019, or, and in 2019, our region science courses were reduced by 20 minutes a class, which is equivalent to 50 minutes per week. And uh, the administration also at that time switched our freshman earth science for freshman living environment. The high school science department did not agree with either of these proposed changes and felt they were unnecessary and hurt, would hurt students of Fredonia by um, overall reduction of, of class and lab time. We've asked on numerous occasions how these changes to the science program would benefit our students. We've gotten no answers or data on how these changes are going to make our students better able to compete for scholarships, for college placements, or how it will improve their college readiness. Math, English, and history all have AIS sections or courses to assist their struggling students. In science, uh, we do not. And on top of that, administration has consider considerably reduced our region's class time uh, again. Uh, numerous schools throughout this region have more class and lab time than we currently have in the science department. There are also currently middle school and other high school classes that meet with more lab, that meet with more time than our Regents science classes. But the Regents science classes are supposed to be getting extra time to help meet the state mandated lab requirement. It means our students will struggle more with labs and tests due to lack of time to properly prepare them. It appears to us that administrators decided to cut our, our class time with our students so we could help cover lunch duties and study halls. But is this the best use of our time, taking away our class time and giving us extra study halls? This year I was excited to teach a dual credit course in environmental science with a GIS 201 credit from SUNY Fredonia. Until I saw they gave me less time for this dual credit class than our shortened Regents classes. How am I supposed to cover the materials for two courses in less time? Our AP courses which are also for college credit, have 50% more time than this dual credit class. Our AP courses also have more time than our region science classes. Is it fair to be giving our best and brightest students extra time for class and labs without affording the same luxury of our struggling students? Two to three years ago, as the high school science department instructional leader, I was asked to write an essay for our Blue Ribbon nomination. In that essay, I wrote how the science department's program at that time afforded us time to prepare and inspire our students to become scientists, and how our AIS sections allowed us to work with our struggling students, enabling them to achieve success in the high school. All this has changed over the last two years. I feel the changes imposed in the high school science program over the last two years are not what's best for our students. The, the current traditional schedule we now have does not even allow us a block of time to address complex problem solving skills the new NGSS standards address. Some science classes have a totally separate lab period scheduled in a different part of the day. With the reduction in time and AIS classes, I feel students will have a harder time competing with their peers in other districts that have more time the time we used to have just three years ago. The Fredonia High School valedictorian and salutatorian are usually looking to go into the science field. But when we hinder the science program 
we are hurting their chances to compete for college placements and scholarships. The effects of these decisions were not completely felt last year because of how the year ended. And I believe many of our students will, will do well no matter what. But I think we can do better. And not just for our best and brightest students, but for all of our students. So I'm asking to you know, please restore some of the science program to what it was when we were nominated for that Blue Ribbon Award. Thank you for your time and consideration, and thank you for letting me advocate for our school and our program. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anyone else who would like to address the board? Andy Ludwig, 30 Ryan Place. Uh, my first comment is going to be made as principal of North Chicago Catholic School. I was reviewing the board agenda for this evening. I noticed that there was some school furniture, some student furniture that was going to be discarded. And uh, I've asked in the past that when you good people are going to discard furniture and things, maybe you give me a heads up. Um, I didn't get the heads up, but I did check out the agenda. And you've got some office chairs, some teacher desks, some ball chairs, and a round table. And I'd like to uh, humbly request that we could take a look at those and maybe have them for Northern Chautauqua Catholic School. And when I've done this in the past, I was always asked to write a formal letter, so I'd like to give this to somebody. Uh, I know you get nervous when I approach the tables. You'll probably be more nervous because I've got, you know, a mask on and we're worried about the COVID. Can I take it over to Ms. Schlegel? Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anyone else who would like to address the board tonight? Yeah, I wasn't done yet. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Right. Well, you know, we do have some touch pads from the swimming pool. I don't know if... Would, would you like to let us have your swimming pool and then we can put the touch pads in? Because I'd love to get a swim team at NCCS, Mr. Aldrich. That'd be great. Just the touch pads. Oh, just the, the touch pool, pads. The pool is ours. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my next comment is as a taxpayer, as a former administrator here, 33-year uh, employee of the district. Uh, you may recall some of my administrative colleagues uh, who were here back in 2008. The district was facing some difficult uh, budget times. And at that point in time, the administrative team decided to lead by example and take a pay freeze. The entire administrative team, including the superintendent, took a pay freeze to help out the taxpayers, to help out the district. I see some very difficult budget times coming ahead of us, and I think that everyone who is employed by this district should step up and lead by example and take a pay freeze moving forward. Thank you. and board correspondence. Uh, the next regular board meeting uh, of education uh, is Tuesday, October 13th, 6 p.m. right here at the school library. Um, the board has uh, initial superintendent interviews September 29th, 30th, and October 1st for our schedule. Also, we uh, will looking to schedule October 6th at 6 p.m. for a, an executive session to discuss contract. Um, that is not formalized yet, but that's fine. Okay. Um, we will have a need for an executive session. Ms. Edgar, do you have anything oh, yet? I'm sorry. <laughs> Would you like me to? Yeah, I think so. Sure. I, I do want to update the board that after our last facilities committee, John and I have been going around and looking at things, and he, I'm sure he can elaborate much more than I, but we did a full walkthrough. We looked at what has been corrected, what hasn't been corrected, and I'll, I'll let John address some of those. Uh, I do want to publicly thank John for what he's been doing with regard to getting cleaning supplies and masks and barriers and everything. I know he is really going above and beyond and, and probably doing more than what most business officials would, would do in their role. And I just really want to say thank you to him. I also want to thank our administrators because while 
things may not be 100% perfect, you are not going to find a more dedicated team who work around the clock to try to get things moving in the right direction. So we continue to meet on a regular basis. We are discussing every day what's going well, what's not going well, and trying to make improvements all the way through. So I just want to say thank you to them. As Michelle mentioned, also thanking the rest of the staff, the teachers, the, the support staff, the secretaries, I mean, our, our SRO, phenomenal in terms of how everybody is coming together as a team to do everything we know how to do to make it comfortable for kids and families as we reopen schools. So just, just masterful. As was stated earlier, we are doing the back, uh, bringing the school committee back together tomorrow for the reopening conversations. Where are we? Where do we need to go? Looking at different options into the future, and we will present not only to the board but to the community if there are going to be changes in any way, shape, or form. We're also looking to do a survey out to families. We're really having conversation around: Do we look at third and fourth grade and, and bring them back? full if we can. And if we can, what might that mean? What additional staff might we need? But we certainly would not want to do that without surveying our families and getting input and making sure that we can do it successfully. So our change is going to come probably. Will we make sure that we know that we've given time for people needed time? Absolutely. We will do that. Thank in this evening, uh, I passed the tennis court, there's quite a bit of activity out there with parking cars and such. Uh, at the facilities meeting, we brought up that pile of concrete in the middle of the parking lot. I see that's still there, and I think it's a liability with somebody with a low ground clearance car. Uh, if they don't see it, uh, there's going to be some damage. So if we could uh, get on whatever contract we need to uh, get that cleaned up. Some residual out there of uh, some white material. Yeah, where is that? I was looking for that the other day. It's not too hard to miss. Is it right in that parking lot? It's where the parking lot meets the grass. Okay, so I was looking for a spot then. Okay, all right. Okay. Mr. Forster. Um, well, yeah. This is coming from myself as a parent, and then we don't have the opportunity to go up and give our comments, but um, I have a senior right now who's been on the computer for the past three weeks now. He's, well, this is the third week. That, well, they started actually last week, I should say. Um, my concern with him is, and, and, and maybe, I don't know if all the students are like this at his grade level, but. He, he came down from his room today to eat supper, and he looked like he was about ready to pass out. He, uh, his eyes were just like red. He said, I'm just going to sit in front of the computer all day long. I have so much computer time. And he, he did say to me, you know, I really wish you could just go back at least a couple days a week. And I said to him, you know what? I do too, because I, I totally feel that it is so important for the students to have, and we all know this, that for the students to have contact, one-on-one -on -one contact with the teachers. Um, the screen time, and we've, we've said as a family, that's ironic that we keep, you know, we were always telling kids to not have screen time, because screen time's bad for you, and here they are sitting in front of the computers, um, my, my, at least my, I'm, my son's end, I know your, yours is different, um, to me, because you're, you're looking for more time, um, on, on my end, um, it's a lot. I think it's excessive time, um, but in the sense that the only way to really fix it, I feel, is to get the kids to school. You know, to get the to get, and I understand that you can't do it 100%. Um, totally understand that. But if we can keep pushing to figure out how to get these kids here at least a couple of days a week, that would be very beneficial for them. Um, just an update on my end of it. I work down at Westfield, and we do have students there uh, a couple days a week. 
they do it uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and they go right now by alphabetical, you know, last name alphabetical order for those first two days and then the last, the rest of the kitchen last two days. We haven't had any issues in regards to safety, I feel, I feel like that's taken care of. I think the biggest hurdle um, is the remote students. Um, during a hybrid approach, you have some students that are completely remote, some students that are in school, and so that has been the most difficult for, area for us to really try to figure out how can we give those students who are fully remote the same amount of time that we're giving those students that are coming in. Um, and it's very difficult to do that for the teachers because they're essentially doing two different jobs, in a sense. So that's, that's been very difficult. But as far as the safety component of it, I feel that we have been able to really keep things safe. Um, we have the ability to, um, to, again, have the kids there, half, half the kids, so that we don't have as many kids in the room as usual. Um, and so I think that just, you know, those, those safety precautions have been working up to this point. So I'm just throwing that out there just to say that, um, you know, in our district, we have been doing it and it's been going well as far as the safety standpoint goes. So if we end up looking down that road, um, I, you know, and, and you have any questions or if you uh, want to talk to me about any of the things that we're doing, please go through it yourself. Thank you. Um, I guess it's, it's really more of a question for Spagherty and, and the administrators. I know that we really only have one full week under our belts and working out the kinks, but how soon do we expect to have some type of kind of formal update on how it's going, you know, what's the attendance, how much curriculum is getting covered, you know, where are we? And I, and I appreciate that it's, that it's early, but I just, you know, will be eager, and I think, you know, the, the public eager to understand what are we tracking, how are we measuring, um, and then how are we adjusting? So how are we adjusting based on, on what we're experiencing? So I don't know if that's at the next board week meeting, if, if in two weeks is enough time, but I, I would just like to put that request out there um, to, to be looking for that information. I would, I would just say that by the end of this week, we'll have a much better understanding mm -hmm. of all of that and looking at that. We'll also have a little bit of data to have for our conversation tomorrow with our back to school committee. I know, you know, in Wheelock, we certainly have been in, in position for a couple of weeks. Uh, so yes, all of that will be looked at. We can do a formal presentation at the next board meeting if that's what the board wishes. I can certainly get that information out to the board on a regular basis as I've been updating you throughout as we're moving forward. But again, in terms of where we're heading and what we're going to, going to be doing, well, we'll be taking the data from the surveys that we're going to be doing, the data that you're asking about, also input from the committee meeting tomorrow, and then looking at all of that, adjusting all of that, formulating a recommendation and bringing that to the board. And, and I, I, I appreciate it. I know everyone is doing double, triple duty because I think in this analysis, we have to understand how effective remote is to understand how hard we should be pushing you know, to get back, or what are the trade-offs? And right. so I think both of those, I mean, you know, both of those analysis have to be done to bring the information together. So, you know, what are we tracking right now, and then how does that compare to, to kind of where we go? Yep. Great, thank you. Um, nothing, nothing really different from what Heath and Lisa said. Um, I agree with Heath <laughs> that it's, um, I, I, waiting for when they can go back. I think that's obviously ideal. I think everybody does. But in the meantime, I agree with Lisa, we have to have some idea of what are we covering, what's expected to be covered, are we on track? So I agree with those questions. And then my only other question was in regard to extracurriculars. Are we making any headway getting kids in for something in the meantime? Some of these student council meetings, anything that could be seemingly easily done, spaced out, are we getting anywhere with that? And thank you to everybody for your Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 don't respond. I can tell you that it was, uh, tonight, prepare. tonight the board um, approved the uh, intramural program, uh, which will start on Thursday. Um, our, our first events for the intramural program are going to be 
uh, frisbee golf in person. Uh, we're meeting out behind the, uh, the tennis courts. Uh, they have an option between frisbee golf and uh, a walk and talk uh, with, with Mrs. Johnson. Uh, there are several events planned. Um, they have uh, inline skates. They have, when the weather changes, they're going to have uh, snowshoeing, cross country skiing. Also, before the weather changes, they have mountain biking. Um, so there's several activities we're going to be having for the kids available for that. Tomorrow uh, is our student council meeting. I'm going to be attending student council meeting. Uh, really, student council is our our first group uh, and, and is our leader group as far as all of the extracurricular groups go. And uh, at tomorrow's meeting, we're going to start planning for when we can have in-person meetings for, for both student council and all of the other uh, extracurricular groups. So we want to start planning those, and that'll be tomorrow. So it's, it's coming right up. Great. Thank yep. you. Yep. Oh, okay. My turn? Your turn. Uh, no, I, I'd like to just thank everybody for their input. Um, very tough time, obviously, understatement. It's, we're all trying our best. Um, we have to make sure we keep our composure throughout all this, but, you know, we, we have to continue to look for, uh, for good practices. Um, I, I, I appreciate the public comments. I appreciate the public comment made by Heath. I think something that, you know, we're two weeks in, three weeks in, going into the third week. Uh, other schools around us are in hybrid. We, Michelle mentioned it, Heath mentioned it. You know, he has personal experience. We could tap into other schools and what they're doing, what their best practices are, what they encountered so far. I mean, uh, I'm, on part, I'm on the uh, back to school committee tomorrow. So this is a lot of good information I've gathered for that meeting. I just wonder if we should have a committee that reaches out to other schools and you know, see what are they doing that allows them like bus fill uh, to be open at this point uh, without any setbacks. Um, because there's no question, I think we all agree that in person is so, so valuable. So perhaps we could look into tapping into other schools and seeing what they're doing in real time. Our neighbors are around us and they probably have some advice for us. Can I ask a question of Ms. Tiger? What triggered, because we were with the hydro in the beginning of this, what triggered us to go to a full room? There were a couple of things that, that happened along the way. One, one was people resources and capacity. We were, at the plan that we originally had, we were so tight that if we lost people, that we didn't have the substitutes to be able to come in and take over to be able to make it, to, to really find success. The other, we had a lot of concern and pushback over the cleaning and the safety around <coughs> the cleaning of the buildings. So we really had to work out some processes with that and make sure that we were going to have the protocols in place, with the health screening, how are we going to do it, do we have the capacity and the resources to do that, what, what do we have to have in place order-wise in order for folks to feel safe at school. So it really slowed us down with being able to say out of the gate we would find success. But as I'm hearing other school districts have achieved that, so other, other school districts have uh, a different philosophy within their schools as to how they're getting things done. So they were some school districts were able to move forward faster and differently than we were, but we're working through those. So to that, would we be getting a report uh, at the end of the week as to how we have overcome some of those hurdles in these three things? Oh, sure. You know, I appreciate the round table, but it just begs more questions from the audience. Maybe you could share with us the different philosophy that Fredonia has that prevents you from doing the things that the school districts around us are doing. It's Mr. also very Mr. difficult Pansky. to hear with Mr. that on, or if you could speak in the microphone because of the masks and the fan. It's really hard to hear everything over here. Mr. Paskey, you have um, I, I thank you to the board for approving the, the intramural program. I think that's that's another great step. It's something that we haven't had in the past to, to get kids engaged, to get them into school in person. Um, I, I also want to thank the board for being cognizant of you know, the, the 
we're looking at steps to, to really measure how we, we move next. That, uh, you know, we, we know that other schools are doing the hybrid and we want to take a look at just because other schools are doing it, are, do they have the success? Are they having success with their hybrid, hybrid programs? Not just in, obviously safety is critical, um, but are they able to meet the needs of, the academic needs of their kids in the hybrid program as well? So those are things that, that I'm glad that, that the board recognizes that we need to be examining as we move forward. That's all I have to think. Ms. Uh, this is day seven for our, our kids and our teachers in the remote, so day seven, uh, we're learning every single day. You know, our kids are learning how to maneuver their education through a platform that they're not necessarily used to. So our teachers are getting to know their kids, the kids are getting to know the teachers. Our teachers are teaching the kids how to use the technology so that they're able to go into Google Classroom and find the things they need to um, Zoom with the teachers. Um, so that is a lot of the work, especially our younger kids, that we're trying to help support that. I can tell you I've gotten a lot of calls from families who are struggling with that. And our teachers have been great with reaching out to the families and helping them work through that. Um, some of our teachers are doing social emotional learning activities because we know that our kids need that. So they're doing that through Zoom. Um, we're trying to help kids to, to share their feelings and let them know that it's normal and it's okay. And helping them to manage those feelings. Um, we have to understand that we have parents who want more and we, want, we have parents who want less. And so it's a really hard to balance it and make sure we're meeting the needs of all of the kids. And our teachers are doing the very best they can to do that balanced form of instruction. We have great teachers, and they are working harder than probably they've ever worked before. And I would just say, this is day seven, please. Please give us some time to work through this, to do what we know that is best for kids, and support the kids through this learning. So we've had a good seven days, we've had bumps in the road, but we're working together to ensure we're providing the very best we can in the remote instruction. Mr. Grawinger, you're, you're Hiding behind the pylon there. I'm right here. So, um, so our in-person kids have been in person now for the eight days, and our processes have gotten a lot better. We've um, our drop-offs in the morning. At the start of the year, we didn't know how many to anticipate. Although we surveyed the families, people weren't bound to not take the bus or take the bus. So. We can get the kids safely screened and in the building in approximately eight minutes, so I think that's pretty good. It takes about um, about 10 people, though, to screen all the kids and get them in the doors in that amount of time. But I think we could scale that up and, and bring back grades three and four, because eight minutes really isn't that bad, and we have built into the day a little bit more time for them to get in the building. So the drop-off procedure is running smooth, and I think we could scale it up. Our pickup procedure, it was, you know, Tim's been a great help with the flow of traffic and things like that. The first couple of days, it, it took a long time, greater than 20 minutes. But now, I believe our average wait time for a parent is around a minute before they get those kids out in their cars. So we really learned quickly, we adapted, we changed the flow of traffic, communicated that. So, and, and our schedule is staggered, so we dismiss kids at about a 15 minute interval with traffic in mind. So I think we could scale that up as well. Um, so a wait time of one minute is pretty good. I think most of the parents appreciate that. They don't have to get out of their cars in the morning and come into the building. Um, so that's been safe and efficient and pretty smooth. Breakfast and lunch have been great. Um, the state has uh, provided funding, or maybe it's the federal government. I don't know. The federal end. So our meals are free for families. 
Um, and our, re our remote students can pick up lunches on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday starting at 10.30, and some of the families are taking advantage of that as well. Um, and, and the day-to-day -day is, is pretty normal in our classrooms. They're, the kids are, are happy to be in school. Our priority has been the, the, the safety and the emotional side of things and getting kids happy to, to be in the building again. And on the academic side, we're going to start our screening process. We're going to go through a series of uh, mathematics and, and ELA screenings. We haven't started those yet, but we should have the results by the end of next week. And that'll be eye-opening for us. So we're going to see, we can compare it to the data that we took. So the last data collection that we had on our students was in January. Um, and then we anticipated taking it again in late April, but when we went remote, we didn't do that. So we will be able to examine the data that we have from our January cohorts. And then now in September, we're going to see. We'll start to identify some gaps in both math and ELA. Um, and we could share that with the, the, um, the board, much like I did in January. So um, our teachers are eager to look at the, that information and kind of pick up where those uh, gaps are. So that's on the, on the, um, the in-person side. Our remote stu students will also be taking those, those screenings, but they'll be taking them remotely. Um, but they will be taking them um, under the direction of a teacher. So the teacher will engage the students in a Zoom, set the kids up, and then it'll be like, we'll be taking it, but the teacher will be there in case a, a student has a question, much like they would have somebody to help them out with the in-person setting. So, so that'll be over the next two weeks, we should be done with those screenings. Um, and like I said, we'll look at that stuff. Our first graders have already had their in-person, their oral reading fluency tests um, given to them, and that data has been uh, gathered at this point, and we'll look at it shortly. Um, our extracurricular appointments were made tonight, so thank you for approving yoga club, art club, and a few of our other clubs. So those will start um, as soon as they can. And uh, we're in the process of meeting Friday with all of our remote teachers to kind of do like a roundtable discussion to see what's going well, what do we need to improve, and what will be the next steps. Um, and, and we also are meeting with the reopening committee again tomorrow, and, and we do a teacher representation on there. So we're happy to be back. We're happy to, to be remote. And our, our remote teachers are reporting that they're getting to know families on a much more intimate level. And they, and they feel that even though they're remote, they've been able to connect with families um, because they are communicating at a much higher frequency than they have in the past. But that's helped, and, and they get to know the kids, and they get to know the family. So one good thing out of remote learning is that I think that the, the increased level of communication will be there. Um, so I want to applaud our teachers for making themselves available and always being there to encourage and support the families. So we're working, we're getting better every day, and uh, I look forward to reporting back. Give me a month to get the data together, but I'll show you, because I think that'll be interesting for you guys to see. Okay, well, one question, I think, is, is on the free lunch, because I've seen the Facebook post, we got the, it wasn't clear to me, it's open to all students, if families need to call and register to make sure that there's a meal available for them. How are we managing that, that flow? I mean, I can just show up, or what, how does that work? It would be helpful to have in contact with District Ahead, <coughs> simply because <coughs> then we know what we're preparing for. Right. But so far, Part of my comments, okay. the cafeteria staff has had no problems supplying what's needed to the free and reduced people <coughs> first and now um, the expanded program. So. so I guess my only comment on that is, is, is that really clear the communication? I think there's comments about if you want it after we go back, then you need to do the form, but I'm not sure it's really clear for this free period what the expectation is for families. So that, that was one comment. I can speak to that a little bit. So. Um, Ms. Cabrera said that we want to still have folks do the free and reduced forms because <clears throat> this program has been given an open end date, so it, it, they could pull back funding at any moment. So we want to make sure we have those free and reduced forms uh, completed for the families if and when we go back to our regular system so that they still have that in place. But there's no necessary registration for this. So right. There's no formal process, but we're saying that as a district, it would be helpful for a count perspective. So that's right. that's the question, I think, is do we want families to say, I plan on getting it, even if afterwards, for free and reduced, I will not be taking it. So I think there's just a disconnect, potentially, in the communication. Sure. We I can see that part, but I, uh, honestly, we haven't had any issues. If someone hasn't called and asked, we can see it. So we can, we can check that out. Okay. 
Yeah, we can, we can add to that and kind of update and just let people know that uh, we've done surveys before, like when we had uh, hiccups to determine how many folks would be coming in, so they had some numbers. Mm -hmm. That was a little bit different because it wasn't the full free, it was for the free and rest families only. Exactly. So we could do another easy uh, survey that we send out to just uh, get some updated information. Right. That's great. Sure. And then second question on your assessment, Mr. Drawlander. Yep. I'm just curious, are we looking at like student to student where student A was last January to where student A is now? Or are we looking at where were our first graders in September last year versus where our first graders are today because they lost three months of kindergarten? So, so we'll, we'll be able to look, drill down and look at both. So we can, we can compare this September to last September, or we can compare the individual students, where were they in January, to where they are now. Okay. So, so we can definitely look at both. I think both are important, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. So. And thank you for your mm -hmm. metrics and kind of giving us that sure. update. I really appreciate yeah. it. Oh. Ms. Piper. Hi, everybody. I'll try to talk about the math. We started a wee lot. We had full sessions for PPK and our kindergarten students. To address your question about the free and reduced lunch, we had each teacher send home a note to the parents notifying them about this program and to ask them to notify us if they do not need one. Otherwise, we've been delivering every breakfast and lunch to all of the students for the last couple of days. Um, and are receiving feedback from the parents that may not need to have that program or don't want to have that program. So that's worked out really nice. So we're doing um, much similar to what's happening with the elementary school, collecting data. We spent the last couple of weeks monitoring our kindergarten students one-on-one, -on -one, checking their progress, seeing how they've done since they've been out, especially those that were in pre-K last year. I do have to put a shout out to Mr. Putney, who's teaching our kindergarten students remotely. Just picture that for a minute. Five-year-olds <laughs> remotely. Um, he's doing an amazing job working with small group students one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I like to go in his room and kind of call it a photo bomb his, his Zoom sessions with those students. But they're having a good time. He's doing a great job. So big shout out to him and to Doug Prince, who is going above and beyond, getting all the technology that we need for the district and getting everybody what they need because we wouldn't be able to do it without without them. So um, we're having a blast at Wheelock. It's great having the students there. We really are not having issues with students wearing masks. I have to shout out to the parents because they've obviously practiced with the kids. They've done that at home because the students just know it's their new normal. Um, they're having fun. They're outside. Mr. Ball's taking them down to the football field. So if you drive up Main Street, you may see them out on the football field 12 feet apart so they can play and run and be, be kids. So we're thrilled to be back. It's been great. Thank you. Mr. Forbes. And to follow up on Dr. Taggart's uh, comments about the walk around today that we took, uh, there were a number of items on the punch list that we had. None of them were significant in nature at all, but as we walked around today, we noticed that several of them weren't done correctly or satisfactory. So I've already notified Buffalo Construction of that. They will have Paul Hope, who's the on site uh, rep for them, on site here tomorrow, and we're going to take another walk through there. Uh, the crosswalk. Lights have been installed off on Route 20, but my understanding is they're not going to be implemented until they decide what they're going to do with the roundabout construction, but those are in and available. Uh, there were a number of questions that were raised by the uh, facilities committee or through the board related to concrete blacktop and the access off the back walkway. Uh, concrete, I'm still working on a couple things there, which I'll get back to the facilities committee with that. Blacktop is supposed to be on site sometime this week to address the concerns that were expressed at the facilities committee meeting and a meeting with Paul Hogue about the, uh, where the access road where the walkway goes to Route 60 tomorrow. There is a process we can follow uh, and I believe we have a solution in mind there. We will also probably need a facilities committee meeting within the next couple of weeks. I understand the board has a busy schedule. It doesn't necessarily have to be a lengthy meeting. But just a few things that we need to update because we are still targeting a conclusion in December and some of these things will <clears throat> the input of the committee. Uh, from my side, the opening of school involves things like the cleaning, maintenance, cafeteria, and transportation areas. Transportation, for the most part, has gone well. We've had a couple of blips here and there. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to do at the outset was to not have any transfers, and by changing up our runs to hit lock school first and then come here, we were hoping to avoid moving kids around. We have had to do a couple of buses with a small numbers of students to transfer so that we're able to get our children that are going to NCCS or Central Christian Academy 
and also to compensate for our Votech transport. But I think we're good there. Uh, we do have a couple challenging runs where we're getting close to the maximum number on each bus, so we're working on possible shifts in our runs for that. Uh, cleaning materials and supplies, we're learning that uh, all the districts in New York want the same thing at the same time. Uh, we've had some challenges in getting some of the product. I uh, have had numerous conversations with Lakeshore Central, Dan Pecos, and his head of maintenance, uh, because I'm tapping into Erie County supply lines there, and also Tim Abbey, who's the head of Buildings and Grounds at Dunkirk, has been very helpful in terms of what they're doing, the products that are available, so that we can look at what we had here and make some adjustments, uh, and some of those occurred today. We've got additional, uh, actually a huge need for wipes and those kinds of things. And we've got product in yesterday and are expecting additional product tomorrow, which are actually supposed to be genuinely Lysol wipes and not a knockoff brand. They're going to be lemon lime. I don't know if that matters, but uh, that's what we're supposed to be getting. And we continue to work with uh, Dave Winter, the head custodian, and make adjustments to our cleaning schedule and the methods in which they're cleaning so that the rooms are safe. The cafeteria we already touched on. They're doing a wonderful job. They're providing the food uh, for free and reduced people. And now anyone outside of that, in terms of go-home products, which are not necessarily cold food, they might be things that are frozen and cooked at the house and they're getting multiple days there. So I think we've got that pretty well covered and talked to Kitty about bringing in additional kids and I think we're ready to go there too. So continue to work in progress. My message has been to be, continue to be patient, continue to be flexible, and above all, you got to stay calm. We got this, we just got to figure it out. Way down at the end. Hi. So just quickly, because I think most of the important comments have already been made, but we, um, in special education, we're continuing to have our self-contained students who've elected for in-person instruction here daily. All related services are scheduled and up and running, uh, both in-person and remote. We've had some changes um, and new opportunities for special ed students that have come up and we've worked through those and um, done some troubleshooting on a case-by-case -case basis and made those opportunities available for students. And I just think on a personal note, overall, I think the entire Fredonia community has been really supportive, um, particularly our teachers and families of the district, and I want to thank them for their flexibility, ideas, creativity, and for respecting the best interest of our um, students and our <coughs> educational system overall. Do you have anything there? Nothing, thank you. Nothing. Nate, counselor, may I ask a question? Sure. I got a, uh, just a little question for Mr. Rollinger as he did his report. I know when we began the school year, we were talking five weeks and see how things work and we're going to continue to evaluate. And then I also heard, <clears throat> excuse me, 10 weeks. Uh, it sounds like uh, things are going. No, it's only been a short time, quite well. And uh, since the uh, working, in working through the back to school committee, which is starting tomorrow, I wonder if it would be uh, possible to uh, anticipate grades three and four returning in five weeks, and during a five week period, since that seems to be doing quite well. I know it's been a short period, but working through our committee and so on, if this is something that they may be looking at, and then we can go up to grade four uh, within that five-week period. Yeah, that'll definitely be a committee decision. It won't be something that I make alone. Um, but, but, yeah, <laughs> well, there you go, right? So, like I said, we, we'll get together tomorrow. Um, I've got my, you know, attendance data and, and things like that that we yeah. can share. And um, So that's in the realm of possibility. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's in the realm of discussion, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, there's there's uh, one of the one of the common themes of all the comments has been uh, thank you to everybody uh, for your patience, for your inputs, for uh, just going above and beyond in this this whole uh, pandemic. Uh, it's. I can't say it enough, and, and I know everybody here has, has said that, but I appreciate everybody's uh, efforts in getting, uh, giving our students the best. So, with that being said, um, we, uh, 
the board, <coughs> the board um, anticipates going into executive session <coughs> uh, to discuss matters pertaining to particular personnel. Um, so, with that being said, I need to make motion to move into that executive session. Ms. Paul Fordman, in a second. Second. Mr. Johnson. Uh, all those in favor? Yes. Yes. So we will. We will be uh, inviting James Boyle into the executive session. So, uh, all those in favor of going into executive session, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed. We are now in executive session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.